All right. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for tuning in and watching. To God be all the glory. Let this song play just a little bit because it's hey, it's powerful. It's powerful. When I lift my voice and shout, can you all come crashing down? I have the earth away. Jesus has given me. When I open up my mouth, miracles start breaking up. Yeah. Jesus has given me every walk on scratching. I have the authority. Jesus has given me. When I open up my mind, miracles start breaking up. I have the authority. Jesus has given me. When I open up my mind, miracles start breaking up. I have the authority. Yeshua has given me. Amen. I just had to make it through that part. Yes. Yes. It's a beautiful song. All right. So today, 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 um, just Thank y'all for tuning. We're just gonna just have this conversation and talk and about you know releasing uh sound, speaking with the authority that that God has given us, and just walking and walking with boldness and power. And Amen. the way the Holy Spirit wants to release and share. Okay, now's the time. Um the body. Of Messiah is going through a lot uh, in the, in your personal life. You may be going through a lot collectively. Uh, you uh, we're going through a lot. The world is going through a lot, but we know that the Most High has given His servants, His people, the authority and power to overcome. And um, so we just go. We're gonna pray, and then I got my the A. <laughs> I got my sister here, Prophetess Lori. That's what I call her. Man, mighty prayer warrior to see in the spirit. And she's going to share some awesome things today. And uh, we'll both share. And then we're going to get out of y'all way. Y'all can have a, a restful Shabbat and a rest day. Please enjoy your families today. Rest in the most high. And, and live and walk in boldness in the authority of Yeshua HaMashiach. So without further ado, Father God, we just thank you right now, Lord God. We thank you for the sound that you want to release, Lord God. We thank you for lifting up our voices, Lord God. Well, Lord God, we are the shofars that when we open up our mouths, Lord God, things change, things happen, Lord God. Things will happen in our community. Things will happen in our household. Things will happen, Lord God, in our bodies, Lord God. Oh, God, we just release healing right now, Father God. We decree and declare, Lord God, that your people will turn unto you right now, Lord God, those that are, are out, Lord God. We thank you right now, Lord God, that regions and nations, Lord God, will begin to be 
a transform, Lord God. We thank you that you will even go past a revival that once they become, once their spirit is revived, Lord God, once they see you and meet you and, and turn to you, Lord God, that they will never be the same, Lord God. We decree and declare right now, Father God, that you are sending and raising up an army, Lord God, and training up an army right now, Father God. And it is being dispatched right now, oh God, in the communities and in our schools, Lord God, in our homes and in our families right now, Lord God, that will begin to do a work, to do a work and your people will become gathered and, and joined together in unity right now, Lord God, to, um, to see to it, Lord God, that your will is done in the earth room right now until you come back again, Lord God, to get us, oh Father God. We thank you, Lord God, for your kingdom and your, and your power on earth as it is in heaven. In the mighty name of Yeshua, amen. 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 So my sister, I'm a, uh, I want to start with you. Um, amen. Go ahead and just share what you share. That's, I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> blessings, blessings, blessings to everyone. Um, it's, an, it's always an honor when my brother uh, reaches out to me and um, and um, you know, trust me to deliberate and and give what the Lord has given unto me. And um, like it's, it's exciting for me. And, and like I said, I thank Him for you know for always honoring me in that in that space right there. So thank you so much, brother. You know I love you. You know I love y'all. Amen. But um, I was um washing dishes a couple of days ago and um. And I was asking, you know, I was just standing there because I had just um, standing there watching dishes. I had just got off the phone with one of my um, one of my sisters in Christ, you know, and um, and she began to tell me like things, tell me about things going on in her life and things like that. And so after I got off the phone with her and everything, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm washing dishes and everything. And then all of a sudden the Lord was like, people just need to trust my process. And I was like, well, Lord, like, wh what do you mean? He was like, the analogy of the caterpillar metamorphosing into the butterfly is a perfect example of the process that my people go through in order to achieve holiness, which is not complete until the day that I return and they receive their heavenly bodies. And I was like, hmm, I said, that's interesting. I said, expound for me, you know, give me a clear understanding. And so um, he began to tell me, you know, certain things as it relates to the process that the caterpillar goes through in order to become a butterfly. And so I was like, okay, and me being the person that I am, I, I'm a, I'm the type of person where if you tell me something, I'm going to go research it. So I'm the research person. So as soon as, you know, he told me that I, I began to go research as it pertains to the caterpillar, the process, the caterpillar changing into the butterfly. And so what I read, um, was, um, that, um, there's an adult um, moth or butterfly that lays eggs. And once the, um, the eggs are laid, they hatch, and then the caterpillar is born, which the scientific term for the caterpillar is larvae. And, um, but when it comes out, it, it's, it's hungry. It's like super hungry and ready to eat. It's like ready to eat everything that it can possibly, eat, everything that's in its sight, like even sometimes some bad things that, that it shouldn't eat. But the purpose of the caterpillar eating is and being um, fed is for growth purposes, for growth purposes, purposes. I'm sorry, y'all. Purposes, growth purposes. So the caterpillar eats and eats and eats, and then it comes to a stage where it sheds its skin, which is called molting. And it sheds this skin every time it gets to a place of growth. So once it sheds the skin and, and becomes bigger and gets longer and get fuller, because the ultimate goal is to become a full adult caterpillar. So they go through the first stage of shedding and 
once they shed, then they continue to eat some more. They continue to eat. They continue to eat. They continue to eat. And as they continue to eat, they continue to grow. And then it becomes a second stage where they molt or shed their layer of skin again. And then they continue on with the eating and the, and the being fed, eating, 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 eating. And then there's a third um, um, molting process that takes place. Now, the difference in the first three moltings and the final molting process is different. So after it sheds the last layer of skin and molting, it eats for approximately two months and then it completely stops eating. It climbs a tree and chooses a branch. And then the final molting stage or the final um, shedding of the skin, which is which again is called molting, it, it takes place. But this time the shedding of the skin encases the caterpillar and causes it to crystallize, which is, which is called a chrysalis or cocoon, as we know, a cocoon. And so as it prepares to enter into this cocoon, it fills it up, uh, it, it um, enters inside the cocoon and then it releases enzymes inside the cocoon for the body of the caterpillar to be liquefied or eating up, eaten up. Now it doesn't eat the entire um, caterpillar because there are essential parts or necessary parts that that should not be consumed by the enzyme. And so those essential parts are for the, is for the making of the butterfly at the end process. Amen. So then this process takes place approximately three to six months. And then the, the metamorphosis of the butterfly begins. And so all of that takes place and the butterfly is created inside this, this cocoon or in the, inside the chrysalis. And as the butterfly is fully formed, the chrysalis begins to become clear where you can actually see the butterfly and the transformation that has taken place inside through the cocoon or the chrysalis. And so then it breaks open as the butterfly emerges from the cocoon and you have a full adult butterfly. And so the uh, he gave me this analogy. And so as I began to study like the whole process of the caterpillar to the butterfly is, is it, it relates to the body of Christ in so many ways, because just like at the beginning, when the eggs are laid by the adult um, moth, that's the babe, the, the babe in Christ stage, you know, where we're, um, we've just given our life to Christ. And when we give our life to Christ, you know, in the beginning, we are hungry and we are hungry for the word. We desire the word. We thirst for the word. And, and we try to, and we're eating up and, and wanting to be fed every time we get a chance. Every time we get a chance, we want them to be fed. We want that. We, we want to know this. We want to know everything. I was seal is through the roof and then as we're being fed with the word we grow we mature we develop and there are different stages of development maturing and growth as it as it relates to the caterpillar it goes through stages of growth you know it, it sheds the old to make room for the new and so as um the um, process goes with the caterpillar, you know, we're constantly eating, being fed the word, continually growing, maturing and developing. And then we go through the different stages and things like that. And then um, at the end is when God, be when we get to the end where the caterpillar actually climbs the tree 
to hang itself, to get ready for the metamorphosis to take place, for the changes to take place, for the renewal, for the um, emerging to take place. The, the caterpillar climbs up the tree and creates the chrysalis or the cocoon. And inside the cocoon is where the metamorphosis or the change takes place. And I relate, and I relate that to like the things that God begins to begins to show us that's on the inside of us. You know, um, envy, jealousy, unforgiveness, um, fear, lack of confidence, lack of self-esteem, um, hurt, pain, rejection, like all of those things that would get in the way of our personal growth in God, you know, to reach the ultimate goal of holiness. And so as the caterpillars inside the cocoon, all of these things are being um, annihilated and destroyed. They're being um, consumed. And there are essential things that need to stay as it relates to the caterpillar. And there are certain things in us that God will allow to, to stay in place for a purpose and reason. And so um, as the um, those things that are in place is a part of the development and the growth and maturing that, you know, the, the process that God has taken us through. And so we get to the end of the process and all of those things have been dealt with. They've been brought up and they've been brought out. You've had to face those things. You've had to face yourself in the process of this growth, this development and this maturing. And it doesn't always feel good. But we just have to trust the process that God has taken us to and taken us through. It is, it's not, he never said it would be easy. And, and it's no way to get around it. You have to go through the process, sisters and brothers in Christ. You got to go through the process. It, you can't skip it. You can't go around it. You can't go under it. You have to go right through it. And in going through this process, then God begins to change you. He begins to transform you. And the ultimate transformation is holiness, which we can only reach at the day of Christ when he comes to take us to our eternal home. That's when the process of holiness is fully complete. And so... All today, I just ask you guys to just, please just trust the process. God knows exactly what he is doing. We may not always feel like that that is the case, you know, when we don't understand from a, a, um, a spiritual aspect. But the thing is, is that everything that God allows us to go through you know, it, it's for our making, it's for our good, you know, it's, it's, it's there to help us to be better than we were yesterday, you know what I'm saying, process is not, a, and going through this process is not a quick thing, it takes time, it, it takes literally a lifetime, it, it takes time, it's, it's like stages, you know, it's, it's like errors, it, it takes time, you know, and so, Again, I would encourage you guys to trust trust God's process. You know, we, we can't control the process. We can't control it. There's no way that we can control the process. And so if we will just trust God at his word, trust God at what he says he's going to do, trust him even when we don't understand, and just allow him to take us through the process and, and bring about that change that we seek or that we desire, you know, then on the, on the other end is the great, is the fullness being able to be used in the fullness of Christ, you know, the, the completion of holiness. So again, I encourage you guys trust the process, trust God, lean not unto your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall lead and guide your path. And so with that, 
I thank you guys so much for listening. And I'm going to give it back to Trey so he can come in and expound on what was just spoken. Amen. Amen. That was that was marvelous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sister, for, for sharing that. So I hope so. We just got a, a science lesson. <laughs> we just got a science lesson also compounded with the word, which makes a whole lot of sense because the creator made science anyway. So yes. and it's just it, it's so amazing because I truly believe that God intentionally makes things, makes creation and makes things on this earth so we can um connect spiritually because it's, it's all cohesive it's all whatever he yes. created it's all yes. cohesive. it was all it was it was cohesive in the beginning you know what i mean so that is yes. beautiful. one thing that you that you said and it and um i just thought about it just now i was just talking to my wife about this the other day it's the difference between being um done and done and let me explain when i say that Cause um, we we were I was I was I was talking to her about some of my concerns about you know where where we are in um, just in life you know what I mean yeah, yeah. and I know that God specifically uh, specifically told me that you know what same thing you're saying it's a it's it's a process it's his it's yes, time it you know what I mean yes. and we I was concerned that you know. It's something that I'm doing to slow myself down and 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 cause me to to not be where I want to be, but then the Holy Spirit just plays on me like, hey, it's a difference between being done and being done. And and what I'm saying is, just like when you put food in the oven, if you mm -hmm. take it out too soon, it's not done. You know, that's what I mean? right. It's, that's not, right. It's, it's not done. So that's that's one aspect of not being done. Well, it's not done because you're not ready, versus yeah. it's not done because you didn't do it. Ooh, that's so, good. That's good. You know, so we can think, and I'm speaking of myself. We can think that okay, I'm not done because I didn't do it. No, you're not done because you're you're not ready. You're not exactly. ready. Exactly. Come on, come on. You gotta be. You gotta continue to be to be cooked. That's just an analogy. God got to continue to work on you and continue to do things in you, just like the caterpillar and the, and the whole metamorphosis explanation. Yeah. Explain. God has to continue to, to work on you until you're able to be done and do what he needs you to do. Exactly. Uh, it is that that is powerful what you just said, because like even while you were saying it, you was like, um, you know, done and done. And I was like, okay. I said, I think I understand. But then it's like, as soon as you started, be, as soon as you began to talk, it's like, he just was like, this is what I mean. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, and, and that is just so powerful because a lot of times we, we feel like that we know when we're done in the process, yeah. but we don't, we have no clue when we're done right. in the process. God will let us know when, Everything is complete. Right. You know, what we do is, is it's like what we was talking about earlier. You know what I'm saying? We get halfway through the process mm -hmm. and we and we we feel our strength being built. We feel yeah. our confidence being rebuilt. We we get our second win and all of that. And then we want to start skipping through the process. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay, God, you got us right here. I got it from here, Jesus. Now. And you run on. But what you do is, is you set yourself all the way back. Mm -hmm. To the beginning. So I, I thank you for, for even for what you just said, because I'm trying to tell you, people need to know and understand one that you have no control in the process no. at all. Not zero zilch, Nathan, not you have no control in the process. And God is the only one that knows when you're done, when you're right. ready. It's just like with a turkey. The, the outside may be done, but the inside may not be done. All right. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Listen, the temperature on the inside, the thermometer that, that you stick inside the meat. Mm. Listen, the outside can be crispy brown and that thing can look good and you can be hungry and ready to throw down and eat. 
But if the temperature on the inside is not cohesive to that meat being cooked thoroughly on the inside, yeah, you're going to make a whole lot of people sick. A whole lot. You're going to make a whole. You're going to make your whole family sick because this turkey is not done thoroughly. Done, done on yeah. the inside. Right. The temperature on the inside of this turkey, the temperature that has to, the, the temperature that had that the that the um heat has to rise up to in order to thoroughly cook the meat. Yeah. The inside, it has to be, if, if I'm not mistaken, 400 degrees, 425, somewhere up in that range right there. Yeah. In human terms, when God is turning up the heat on the inside of us as it relates to this process, it may be hotter than that. Yeah. But because he created us, he knows a, the exact temperature. Yeah. To take the <laughs> temperature. He yeah. knows the exact amount of heat that it takes to get us to where we need to be. Yeah. So listen. Oh my God! You just opened up a whole new other subject right here. Now I'm trying to hold my peace now. Nah, but hey. I'm you, God is. Oh my God, God is so amazing, Jesus. So but that, that is powerful. What you just said. Oh my God, that. Oh, you go ahead, cause I, mm. no, that. Hey, that, and I just wanted to, to encourage some people out there, cause there there are, there are some there. Yes, there are some things in our lives, and I'm just speaking for everybody that God may have told you to do when you was mm -hmm. slow full or slow in doing. Yeah. But, but a lot of a lot of things in our lives is like it's not you. It's not you. You just not done yet. You know what I'm saying? It's God's exactly. timing. Yeah. It's God's timing. Like trust trust this process. And yeah. to, you know what I'm saying? You're trying to force yourself to to, to meet certain goals, but even our goals, if you could just think about this, like the goals that we set, which is good to set goals. And God believe God mm -hmm. wants us, He wants us to set goals to be intentional. Faith without yes. faith without works is dead. Yes. But in your goal setting, there is a process. So yes. if your process, if you have a, a process, a particular process that God has you, you got to go through that process to meet that goal. And That's we, right. we can get discouraged. And get discouraged yeah. because oh I should have met this goal here I should have met this goal at this time that time is like all right listen God is really it's the mercies of God that's allowing you not to make it at this particular time because you will be undone. Mm -hmm. So you know it's the difference between you not being done and you didn't do it. You know what I mean? And what you just said too. We think okay I'm done I did this well you know stuff ain't happening or another another way of looking at it well um and maybe if i would have done this i would have been there's like no it's it's not up to you it's, exactly it's my, it's my it's it's my process yeah you need to walk and i say move and when when i need you to redeem the time and move fast and do it i'm gonna speak to you about that but you gotta go through this process you know what i'm saying exactly and that can even relate to marriages yeah oh my god Listen, when you enter in or when you decide, when, when you, it, it starts at the beginning, you meet the person, y'all date, but I'm saying sometimes what we do in the dating process, like they say all the right things during the dating process, mm. say all the right things that are doing the dating process. And then you get to the part where that, that he will ask you to marry him and stuff like that after some time. And, and sometimes we even jump the gun on that. I mean, I'm saying, I, I personally, I, if I could be transparent, that was me, okay? Yeah. I met him. He told me all the right things. I was in love. I was head over heels. I was gone, lost in the sauce or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is I did not wait. I didn't wait in the process mm -hmm. of getting to know him fully before marriage. And so what happens is in that process is, is that I jumped from chapter one to chapter 10, mm -hmm. but I didn't, I didn't slow down enough to get two through nine so that God could prepare me for what was in chapter 10. Mm -hmm. 
And so what happens is you miss all those essential things in between that will prepare you for what you where you have jumped to. And with me, we got married in five months. And so then once we got married and then reality set in and I began to see other things that I didn't see in the beginning, mm. then I'm like, uh, what is this, Jesus? And he was like, you jumped the gun. You, you jumped ahead of me. And when you jump ahead of God, even in the process, when you jump ahead, you miss all the essential things in between that you need to prepare you for where you jump to. Another another uh, analogy is when, like when your child is intelligent and you skip them from kindergarten to first or second grade. Mm. It's great that they are intelligent and that they're smart and that they can catch on. But don't rob them of them being a child. Yeah. Let them get the in-between stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because those things, it's, it's essential. Just like even with, with the with the caterpillar, once he released the enzyme to consume the caterpillar, he still left necessary essential parts that, that needed to stay, that, that were needed for the caterpillar to turn into a butterfly. So, I mean, it's, it's the same thing. Like, there are essential things that are needed. There are essential parts that are needed for, so that when you get there, you already know what, you know, is is you already got an idea of what to do. You already have the knowledge to know what to do when you get to that place. And, and like I said, a lot of times what we do, I think Miles Monroe said that thing so greatly when he said it. He was like, he said, our lives are like a book. He was like, we start out at chapter one, we doing good. We Chapter two, we doing good. Chapter three, chapter five, we start feeling ourselves and think like, okay, Lord, I got this. I got this from here. I got it. And then we jump from five all the way to 12. Now, we done miss six through 11. And we done got to 12 and we see something that's not that we ain't prepared for, or we encounter something that we're not prepared for. But if we would have stayed from chapter six to 11, we would have been prepared for chapter 12. And so I said that to say, you know what I'm saying? That's why you cannot lean on your own understanding in the process that God is taking you through. You got to trust him with everything because he know us he created us he created every system on the inside of us he know what we are thinking before we think it he know what our hearts feel before we even know what our heart feel and i'm trying to tell you and, and people don't understand people don't realize that even if it's a false perception once when you think it once it leaves here it goes here and even if it's not real, even if it's real or not, the thing is, is what, what you think and what enters into your heart, it becomes your reality. And those are like some of the things that God has to deal with us on in the process. You know, he has to, to break our human logic from his truth, his truth, what his word says. You know what I'm saying? We always think, we think we got it together a lot of times, but the truth, the reality is, is we ain't got it all together. We may, we may be up today and fall tomorrow. We may be up the next day and fall the next day. But the thing is, is we just trust God in the process. Don't, don't, I mean, I'm saying he, he tell us all the time, don't trust in our own self. Don't trust in what we think. Believe in him because he knows everything. He is the creator. He knows everything. He know the beginning from the end. We going through it. He already know it. And so, you know, I, I mean, I'm trying to tell you, it, it's just so essential that we just trust God. We got to trust him because I'm telling you, every time we try to do anything outside of God, man, I'm trying to tell you, it can be devastating in nature. It can be devastating. It can be mind blowing. So we got to trust God. With everything, we got to trust God with any decisions, any moves, anything. We got to trust God with everything that with everything that we are. We got to trust Him. I'm telling you, it, it's woo, it's essential to trust God. It's essential.
And I just want to say one more thing as it relates to that butterfly. And then I'm going to set up so you can get over here. Because <laughs> you got me excited now, now. So the thing is, is that um, 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 the moth or the butterfly symbolically is, um, according to the Bible, is the frailty of humans and of the human existence and the temporary quality of earthly possessions. That's what the butterfly and the moth symbolizes. And if that ain't us, all day, every day, I don't, <laughs> listen, when I read that right there, I was like, oh my God, Jesus. I was like, okay, Lord. I said, whoo, you just hit me all up in the head, Lord. I said, but I, I hear you, I hear you. But I'm telling you like, it's, just trust God. Just trust God, y'all. I mean, that's all I can say. Trust God. He know. We don't know. He knows. You go ahead now. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Mm. Holy Spirit took this over because this I didn't even I had some 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 stuff written down and everything, but trust in this process, guys. Man, trust trust this price. You know, I'm gonna go to this scripture right now. I'm gonna share my screen. I'm gonna. Hey, I, I always keep this this handy. And y'all, can you see? Mm -hmm. All right. And hey, we still we still releasing word. Everybody that's watching, we still releasing word. Um, speaking, open up my mouth, and this is a part of open up and open up our mouths, releasing the word because this needs to be this needs to be heard right now. So Amen. Psalms 139. I want to touch on the fact of what you said about God knowing us, and this is the scripture that 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 came to me as soon as you said that. It says uh, one Psalms 139. Oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You understand my thought from afar. You scrutinize my path and my lying down and are intimately acquainted with all my ways. Yes. Even before there is a word on my tongue, behold, oh Lord, you know it all. Mm -hmm. You have enclosed me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. Yes. For us. It mm. is too high. I cannot, we cannot attain it. Mm -mm. But God can attain it. He, yeah. can, he can attain it. I'm going I'm to I'm skip down here. Uh, it says, if I, if I start in that verse uh, 9, the second part of verse 9, if I dwell in the remotest part of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand will lay hold of me. If I surely say the darkness will overwhelm me and light around me will be night, even the darkness is not too dark to you. Yeah. So God knows us intimately. He know he yes, he does. This is, this is the psalmist just saying, God, listen, you know, you know me through and through. I can't go nowhere without you knowing where I'm at. And matter of fact, wherever I'm at, you can you are at and can be at Jesus. whenever you want to be. Mm -hmm. So this just the the concept. I know we hear that and we 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 say that, especially for us as believers. But um, that is a a key component to trust and trusting the process, knowing that okay, God, you search me and you knew me, you know me. That means that you see things on the inside of me that I don't see in myself. You see the things that are undone that I don't see inside of myself. You see the things that I need to work on that I don't see on the inside of myself. And you, you, some things that God revealed to us, some guys, some things God don't want to reveal to us because it may just break us apart. So He yeah. said, "You know what? I'm just finna just, I'm just finna just cook this thing. I'm just finna just go ahead and take you to this process." And it's because He's trying to get us to a place. It's because he's trying to get us to a place. Let me go to Romans uh, 8 and 28, the scripture we all probably know and can, and can quote, but there's a purpose and a reason behind that. Romans 8 and 28, because there's a reason for this process. There's a reason for this process. And we know that God causes all things, all things to work together for the good of those who what? Yes. Love God. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so number one 
if you are in a process with God and you are you are a lover of God, you need to count that all joy facing yeah. trials. That's another scripture, yeah. James, uh, James 1. You need to count it all joy because God is trying to make you complete. He's trying to make you whole. You are his child. And just like earthly parents, they're not going to send you out there without teaching you or training you what to do. If they not have, if a good parent, if you have not been taught and trained what to do, then I'm not going to send you to, to a place where other people are going to take advantage of you because they are not your parents. My daughter, Izzy, she's smart. You know, my wife did a, a real good job with her. And I'm not saying I didn't do nothing. Of course, I helped too. Um, but she hasn't even been to school yet. You know, not, not, not at a brick and mortar school. So, you know, you know, we uh, taught her, you know, uh, ABCs, numbers, and, and now she knows how to add. And she's, she's just a, a brilliant child. And she's also learning the social, social and emotional learning, too. We're also trying to teach her that. So because we're trying to teach her those things, we decided, OK, we're not going to put her in school yet because there's some although she's smart academically and intellectually there's still some things that we think that she needs to learn before we place her in a her in an environment that we don't think she's going to not just this fail but not thrive at so well, us as parents we are working on those things because we see those things she's ready she's ready she thinks that she can do this but she's ready but we see certain things on the inside of her that says nah if, 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 if you do this at a school, then administrators and people are going to think something is wrong. Nothing is wrong with you, but this is an area that you need to be trained and developed in. So before we send you there, we're going to train you and teach you and develop you in this area. So that way you can be what? Ready. Exactly. Okay? And because she's our child, she's our child. And people, you're going through this process. It is a good thing that you're going through this process because God loves you and you love God. So guess what? When you love God, when you are seeking God, it's not punishment. Oh, God said, okay, man, this person is seeking my face. This person is walking. They are walking with me. They are talking with me. They are doing things with me. Guess what? I'm going to put them through what? A process so I can get them ready for, guess what? Get them ready for what? We're about to read on. To those who are called according to his purpose, for those who he formed, who he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son, so that would be first, so they would be the first, uh, firstborn among many brethren. All right, here's the good part. All of this is good, but this is the point I'm trying to make. And these whom he predestined, he also called. And these whom he called, he also justified. And these who he justified, he also what? glorify god is trying to take you through this process so he can cause you to be glorified now yes, yes now yes in the sense of um, um in, in the scripture of course he's called talking about those that he are calling to himself and being justified by the blood of yeshua and us being conformed to his image so we can see him and be a part of the new heaven and the new earth but I, mm -hmm. I, i'm making this and dropping this point right now that the process He's causing all these, this, this process to work together for us so we can be justified and glorified to, so he can take us to a place so we can glorify him. And in that, we, we, we sit on stage and saying, oh man, look at us. Because a butterfly is beautiful when it comes out of that cocoon. Yes, it is. It's beautiful. So and people, we, we look at stuff and say, okay, I got, I, I want, I want this. I want to be there. I want to, I want to have this. I want to have that. I want to be at this place in my life. And I want to do this. God says, okay, you, I love you. So because I love you, I'm going to take you through this process. So you can get to this place. <laughs> so you can get to this place. What good is a, a, a caterpillar going inside of a cocoon and come out a, a caterpillar? Come on now. You know <laughs> <laughs> what, what what good is that what good is that like now nah, when, when god said when god say lights camera action i'm using it as an analogy when god say lights camera action you want to make sure okay you are presented beautiful because he does not present us in an ugly manner just Amen. like the scripture where where it says uh, yeshua loves us as christ loved the church and mm -hmm. he presents us as spotless without blemish mm -hmm. so he's going to pre present 
his child, his bride, he's going to present us beautiful. In order to be presented beautiful, you have to go through a what? A process, process. a beautification process. And this <laughs> process is because he loves us. He loves us. Okay. He loves us. And, and that scripture reference, and I'm just, God is just giving me all these scriptures right now. Right now, So I pray I'm not talking too fast for nobody. And we, this is all making sense. <laughs> James 1, consider all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And mm -hmm. let endurance have its perfect results so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. That don't be perfect, meaning perfect as in, not you're gonna be a perfect person, but, 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 but perfect in the sense of, all right, in, in, in Yeshua, because that's what we are perfected in. Perfect for the, the task that God is trying to get you to, to a place to, 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 uh, to a goal or to complete. Amen. But, God is and, awesome. Go ahead. And don't forget Philippians 1 and 6. Let's and I am sure of this. Yes, ma'am. He who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus. Right there. Philippians 1 and 6. Can you see, can you see the scriptures, my sister? Uh, no, it's, it's kind of small, but I got my Bible right here in my hand. Okay, okay. But I'm going to read it from the Amplified Bible. I just read um, that from the um, from the um, the New International Version, but I'm going to read it from the Amplified Bible. The Amplified Bible says, Philippians 1 and 6, mm. I am convinced and sure of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will continue until the day of Jesus Christ, right up to the time of his return, developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion in you. That says to me, God works from the inside out. Yeah. He works from the inside out. It's not the outer appearance first because the outer appearance can be deceiving in nature. It, he works from the inside out. I'm trying to tell you. Woo. Oh my God. Amen. And this, and this is so so beautiful. And uh, this part right here uh, coincides to something that I, I was I was going to talk about. You know Isaiah 60, and I, I'll talk about that on a later later video. But also. Um, a feast day, a feast day is coming up in this Sukkot, and it's not a, a day, but it's for Sukkot, it's seven days. Mm -hmm. And the process and what we're talking about relates to this appointed time, this high Moadim, this point in time. So I'm going to go to the, uh, and I, I enlarged my, my screen, so maybe, can you see these words now? Because if you can see me, mm -hmm. right, Okay, good. I can feel that. Okay, so we're going to go to Leviticus. <laughs> Leviticus chapter 23. <laughs> all the way down here to uh, verse 39. I got it highlighted. It says, on exactly the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered the crops of the land, you shall celebrate the feast of the Lord for seven days with the rest on the first day and the rest on the eighth day. Now on the first day you shall take for yourselves a foliage of beautiful trees, palm branches of boughs of leafy trees and willows of brook, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. You shall celebrate it as a feast of the Lord for seven days in the year. It shall be for a perpetual statue throughout your generations. You shall celebrate in the seventh month. You shall live in booths or tents for seven days all the native born in Israel shall live in boots. So your generations may know that I had the sons of Israel live in boots when I brought them out of the land of Egypt and I'm the Lord your God. So Moses declared the sons of Israel, the appointed times of the Lord. So this is what's, what's happening here. When God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, of course they were in the, they were in the wilderness, but God was with them, so he had them set up. They set up tents. They lived in tents, and, and God provided for them. 
So this is a memorial of when God was working on their behalf, even though they didn't have anything. So starting on uh, the calendar says Monday for seven days, people, you know, they, they live in tents, people go out and they camp and, and, you know, they, you know, they, they have a feast and, you know, with food and just fellowship and, and rejoicing and celebrating for seven days because of this appointed time. Also, mm -hmm. also what this represents, this represents um, the uh, tabernacles, also called Feast of Tabernacles. And, you know, uh, if, there's a couple of ways of looking at this. When God came on the earth the first time to tabernacle mm -hmm. with us, um, I believe that scripture is also Isaiah 9 and 6 when it says the child will be born, he will be a mighty counselor, and the, the government is going to rest on his shoulders. So he, God, uh, Yeshua HaMashiach, um, put himself in a human body and he tabernacled with us. And now we have him. Now, of course, he's going to come again the second time and he's going to reign with his saints, the millennial reign. And that was something I was going to talk about. But talking about the process, like God was with them through that process because they had a process themselves for the time of, of Passover when they were uh, delivered out of Egypt and then they went through the wilderness and the Lord put them through a process so he can show them what? That I am God. I, I, I'm your Elohim. I, I'm your everything. You need to trust me. And he did all these things to show them that, listen, you need to trust me. I'm the one that's providing for you. I'm the one that's giving to you. I'm the one that's that's, 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 that's giving you quill. I'm the one that's giving you, man, I'm giving you all these things. So when you make it to the promised land and eat the, the, the good of the land, you can sustain yourself and you can trust me, mm -hmm. God, when you make it to where you're supposed to make it. Yeah. We do not go through this process. We will make it to our promised land and we will be disobedient just like they were. And then we will fall off. Yep. Can't so, even enter in. Can't even, can't, can't even, can't even hold on to what, what he has for us because we didn't go through that process. So I'm just, I just thank God for just the, the process and, and going through the process and knowing that he's with us in the process. We, it's not like we, we being cooked and there is no, nobody to, to, to give us wisdom. There's nobody to, to tell us what we need to do and how we need to turn like no like no we are going through this process with the most high and he's doing it because he's trying to use us he's trying to use us like we are supposed to be releasing something awesome and something great a holy sound and we're supposed to be change agents in the earth room we're supposed to be releasing the word we're supposed to be impacting everything that's around us and we cannot do that if we are undone Amen. And God is, he's dealing Amen. with, he's dealing with his house first. He's dealing with his house first. He's judging Amen. the church first. Amen. Oh. Amen. I just give God thanks and praise. Go ahead, sister. You have something to say. Um, I'm just like, um, just like in, in awe of, of, of God's um, goodness and and His grace and His mercy, because it, like, what if? Um, okay, let me let me rephrase this. So, I um I was asked the question why um why do why don't God stop or intervene when we're getting ready to um to make a mistake or do something that we shouldn't do. And I, I told, I had to tell the person, I was like, let me really think about that. And then I'll call you back because one thing you never want to do is to speak out of your flesh as it pertains to that, because some people take literal what you say, you know, so you, you really have to be mindful in, 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 um, when you're answering things of that stature, I mean, and it's okay to say you don't know and, and then go find out what it is or, or get uh, as close as you can to the thing or, or give it to somebody that can expound on it in more detail. And then you relate it to the person. But, um, 
I was asked that and I was like, you know what? I said, Lord, that's a good question. And then, um, you know, the Lord was telling me, he was like, I could have easily put it in my laws and made you serve me. I, I could have put it right in there and you would have had to serve me. He said, but I didn't want to make you serve me. I wanted you to serve me because you wanted to and because you loved me and you wanted to be in my presence. You wanted to to be where I am and to to understand what I understand and know what I know. And so um, when I answered the question, you know, um, the thing is, is um, he gives us free will. You know, that doesn't mean that we can do a whatever we want, but it means that he gives you the the right to make choices. But the thing is, is that even in giving us that, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes we we make bad, we make bad choices, we make bad decisions. And in us doing that, you know, we um get ourselves into things and you know, and and like I said earlier, you know, sometimes we make decisions or do things, um, do things outside of the will of God. You know, saying so it can be devastating in nature. It can be, you know, it it can set us back. It can do a lot of damage. But the thing is, is that what I told um, the person that asked me, you know, um, God is not going to um, make you do what you don't want to do. You know what I'm saying? He's not going to make you do it. He's not going to force you to do it because if he, if he, if he does that, then, you know, he will be actually going against what he set in place. And God is never going to go against what he set in place, um, to, um, bring you back from what you created for yourself. But he loves us so much that even when we're in his permissive will where he really don't have to help us at all he choose, he loves us he loves us so much that he'll still come and see about us even when we make the mistakes even when we do it and the thing is and it's not that god doesn't try to stop you because he'll he'll even he'll even speak to you sometimes like don't do that don't turn right here go left go right you don't need to go over there or you shouldn't go over there. But a lot of times we're not attentive to the voice of God. We're not attentive to the things that, that God places right before us to, you know, to help us to understand that, you know, that even though he doesn't like fully intervene like what we think he should, that he actually does intervene and, and gives us a choice. But when we make the decision, you know, we're operating in our own will, which is one thing like I said earlier, he gave us free will. So my thing is, is that, you know, even like as it relates to the process, you know, we, we do that quite often, even going through the process. And the thing is, is that, you know, God loves us so much that, like I said, even when we make a mess, you know what I'm saying? Um, he'll still, you know, oftentimes come through to, um, to help us to get back in place and get back on the path, you know, um, um, and repentance, repentance is so necessary, but it has to be true repentance, not just because you feel bad because you got caught or you feel bad because you got found out in what you were doing. Repentance is turning away from that thing and never looking back. And I think a lot of times people misconstrue the the meaning and the definition of repentance. And so even in the in the process, sometimes when we feel like that we have, but then the Lord shows us in, in the process that we never repented, then we 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 can sometimes get offensive. And it was like, well, um, I did repent. Like, I don't understand. I don't understand. But the thing is, is that God knows true repentance from you just being sorry that you got caught or you got exposed or whatever in what you were doing. And so um, I just I just really want us to, you know, to really know what true repentance is. And, and also as it relates to forgiveness, y'all, we got to forgive. We got to forgive if you.
uh, if we're uh, I'm sorry about that. If we're unsure of what um, unforgiveness is, then ask God and he will show you. He will show you what unforgiveness is. He'll show you if you have unforgiveness in your heart, you know. So um, I, I definitely would encourage you guys um, to, um, can you still hear me, Minister Warren? I can still hear you. Okay, I just wanted to make sure because I was turning my ringer off, which I should have done in the beginning. Yeah. But just make sure, like I'm saying, you guys, that you know, um, that you ask God to show you if you've truly forgiven. You know, that if, that you even um show have God, I mean, ask God to show you um what true repentance is, because you know, um and I, like I said earlier, in our own human logic, we think we may think that we're doing things the right way, but in reality, you know, it's it's not. And so, um, you know, we we just got to make sure that we're doing everything um, that's um, supposed to be done, so that we can, you know, get to the place that God is trying to take us. And so, um, but that was all I had. Amen. Amen. Uh oh. Amen. 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 So that was that was I don't even want to uh back down and mix it mess everything up, but this was awesome. This was great. And trust the process. Amen. Trust the process. Um a question that came into my mind, and I'm not, you know, people may think they they seem like they just winging it. We're not winging it, guys. We're not winging it. <laughs> We're not winging it. So when I do that, that means that something has been deposited and now I'm about to say it. I, I want to make sure I am uh, articulating my words when I speak. So I just want people to know that if, when they're watching this. But, I understand what you mean because like, yeah. it's like with me, it's like when I get excited about the word of God, I start stumbling over everything and and, 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 and they start to stutter and stuff like that. Yeah. But I'm just saying it's just, it, it just be so much and it be so profound when it yeah. comes to you and you try to put it in the best way possible. But it's like, sometimes it just don't work out like that. But as long as the people get the message behind what you're saying. That's what's important, not the the um, strategic way that you place yeah. your words and everything. It's, it's about the message at the yeah. end of the yeah. day, amen? So, cause yeah. I know I be turning some stuff up and I'm trying oh, to- Oh yeah, <laughs> me too, me too, me too, so, me too. Hey, you know, hey, God is good, let them, let them say what they gonna say. We just need to say what we gotta say, you know? Amen, in that order. <laughs> But one of the questions that came to my mind and is what do you do in the process? You know, we, we, we know we got to trust God. You know, what does that look like? You know what I'm saying? How do I act or how do I conduct myself? And in my process, what do I do? So for those that, that are asking that question, because I would ask that question. Mm -hmm is number one, trust God, but I'm not just gonna give you a vague, a vague answer, trust God, okay, what does trusting God look like? All right, so when you're in the process, trusting God, meaning that wherever he's leading you, then you are following his lead. When you, when you, you have to have, how do you follow his lead? You gotta have some quiet time in the process, okay? We, you have to spend time with God in the process. That's, mm -hmm. Don't spend time with God in the process. You're either gonna make your process hard, prolong your process, or you're going to shorten your process and shorten your process may be worse, or maybe worse than prolonging your process. Cause we already talked about what happens when you shorten your process, you're not gonna be done, okay? You're not gonna be ready. Um, so spending time with the most high, you have to do that in the process, because when you spend time with the most high, reading the word, uh, um, um, sitting quiet, making sure you're listening, praying, so praying and listening, meaning that, okay, after you pray to God, take time to listen and hear, and hear what he says. It'll also help you listen to the voice of God, all right? 
um, a lot of people, they, they scribe, so they write things down as they sit down and listen. Sometimes I do that. I pray and then I sit and then I write, write things down. Okay, so you have to spend time with the most high and slow down. So you slow down, spend mm -hmm. time, spend time, slow down. And I will raise my hand. I'm I'm not good at that. I have to slow down. I, I have to do a better job myself at slowing down. You get so caught up in doing this and that. I'd be like, slow yeah. down. Slow. Yeah. So Absolutely. Slow down. Spend time with God. Pray read his word okay and then of course have your fellowship and circle of people that you fellowship with that are in god okay so being in the process does not mean that you cooped up in the room so we're not talking to nobody not doing nothing just 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 sitting around and even if you say well i'm spending time with god well you still need to have interaction with your fellow man and you still need to be um loving your your brother and your sister in Christ giving to your to to people that need to that God tell you to give to serving in whatever capacity that you serve in. I'm not talking about in just in church in the in the uh, the physical church, but serving is serving. However, however you're serving people in whatever capacity that is. So spending time with God, slowing down, serving. So those are three things I named and, and, and loving, make sure you're loving. And also what you said, just checking yourself, checking yourself, yeah. asking, asking for forgiveness. If you, if you have a, an all between you and somebody else, make sure you are doing that. Make sure that you are asking forgiveness and making amends with people that you are, 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 are having conflict with. So these are the things that you should be doing in the process. I'm not limited to just that because I'm pretty sure I'm missing other things, but those are the things that are very key. Spending time with the most high. I know I'm being very repetitive because I want people to get it. Spending time with the most high, slow down, serving and giving and introspection, check, checking yourself and going to God and say, okay, God, get this whatever I need that didn't be dealt with help me overcome these things as that I that I'm dealing with and uh of course making relationships right so those those are some of the key things because just because you're going through a process that you, you still a believer you're still a, a a representative of the most high you still need to do things that's not gonna never change some things will never change spending time with God reading his word praying um, loving, loving one another, that should never change no matter what you're going through. Exactly. So, and when you're in the process, you need to be even doing that, if not, the more. Amen. And that, and that was, thing, go ahead. And one thing that I always say is, you know, um, if, if you know that you're not good at holding yourself accountable, get an accountability partner. But before you do, you have to be real with yourself. If you won't hold yourself accountable, you're not going to receive accountability from nobody else. So when you're real with yourself about what you know you've done as it relates to things that you know for yourself that are outside the will of God, or you know that what you did or said was wrong, and you don't say, girl, you know you was wrong, or oh boy, you tripping. Then if you won't do that to yourself, then you're, you're going to have a difficult time receiving accountability from somebody else when they come to you to hold you accountable for what they saw you doing. And the thing is, is that they're not going to come to you and be like, girl, I seen you. You was at the liquor store. And yeah, you were that, 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 that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is an accountability partner going to come to you and be real with you. They're going to tell you straight up just like it is, but they're going to do it with love. Mm. They're not going to do it with a condescending tone and they're not going to make you feel bad, you know, as it relates to what they saw you doing. And the most important thing is that if you're with a crowd of people, pull me off to the side and tell me, you know, I saw you, this is what I saw you doing. That ain't of God. Let's pray. Yeah. Amen. 
you know, because a lot of times, you know, I have seen in times past where, you know, uh, accountability was being brought and, you know, the accountability part is appreciated, but you got to be careful with the tone that you take. Oh, my sister, I think your mic, your mic is muted. Oh, of accountability. <laughs> Woo, that's why I rebuke you. And but you got to be, your, your delivery is key. Your delivery is key. You, you have to, you have to um, um, really examine the delivery because if the way you're delivering it to that person, you wouldn't want nobody to deliver it to you in that way, then you, you know, reciprocate, you know, give it to the, the person that you, the way that you would want to receive it. You know, because the, the tone that you take can be the difference in that person receiving what you said and turning a deaf ear to what you said. Yeah. Um, another, and as you were saying it, uh, um, and I know the Holy Spirit just told me this, when I was given a list of what to do when um, you're in the process, praise, praise. Yes. God, hey, praise God. Praise God. You give God praise. You praise God like shh, like nobody's made. You praise God like no like it's nobody's business but yours. Because, and here's the reason why, you know, praise and thanking God. So praise and thanking God. Praise and thanking God. Because number one, it's the very mercies of God that you're making it through that process. Anyway. Amen. Amen. We all we all have to be thankful for what we have because without without Yeshua, without his blood, we'll be done for. And a lot of times when we go through a process, things naturally, in a natural eye, bad things happen to us. Right. Whether it be in our body, whether it be um, on our jobs, whether it be with different relationships, whether it just, it, it's just a countless areas of our life where negative things can seem to happen. It can look negative, but it's a process. So you got to praise God so you don't let those things that we think are deemed to be negative um, to tear us down. Right. You want the things in your body? Okay, okay. you praise God because God is the only person that can change it. You thank God, you, you speak healing to your body and you praise God for, for carrying you through this day. You praise God for deliverance and healing. And if he do it, he do it. If he don't, then that's, that's is where he got you at right now. And that's that's what you that's what you're going through. And so and I'm not just talking about just healing. And if if something happens on, on your job, there's something that's happening in your family. And I'm my, my son is just crying right now. So bless his son. He's okay. He's okay. Ain't my, no question his phone. Right? Yeah, so. my, <laughs> my my wife got him. Man, my son. But anyway, but praising God, praising it, it is essential because praise takes you to a place of, 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 of thankfulness and appreciation of God. And, and then and you just look at it like, man, God, like it ain't that bad. It ain't that yeah. bad. And it, it takes your your mind off the the turmoil of the situation and it mm -hmm. takes you to a place of gratefulness. And I can I'ma go on and I'ma continue to go forth and and go forth mighty in what I'm doing and go through this process. God, you got me, Lord, I thank you. I, I praise you. I glorify you. Thank you for, for, for doing this. Thank you for doing it. Thank you for the thank you for the things that you have done. Thank you for the things that you're gonna do. And just, oh God, I love you. I thank you for you being God. I thank you for, for my family. Just being thankful, gratitude, and praise goes hand in hand. But also you must do that in the process. That's a must do. That's Amen. A must. And I think another one would be is believing God in the process, believing in his word that he's going to do everything that he promised in the process. Everything that he spoke over your life, believe and receive that it's going to come to pass. Amen. 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 Believing in him, when, even when you don't understand, believe Yes. So what we have so far is 
spend time with God, slow down, pray and listen. Introspection, that means like check yourself, um, repair relationships, asking for forgiveness and you forgiving other people, you know, uh, praise and thanksgiving, believe God and believe in his word. Believe yes. God. Believe in his word, so. And just you just follow the Holy Spirit, whatever the Holy Spirit needs y'all to do. But hey, we we thank y'all. That's that's all I have. Man. That's all I have right now. Um that's it. That's it. Amen. 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 That Amen. was that that was that was good. <laughs> that's that's all I can say. This was good. This was good. I'm telling you, it, it was it, it was necessary, it was essential, and it was definitely needed. Yeah. I'm going to uh, say a prayer. And I, anytime we, we assemble to come together, I always want to extend salvation to people or to come into the family of, of Messiah. And then after that, that'll be it. So Father God, in the mighty name of Yeshua, just thank you for those that are watching. They made it to the end of this video for those that are yes, already believers, those that will watch it, those that will share this for others to watch it. Lord God, whomever is listening, whoever does not know you, if you never said yes to Yeshua, Jesus Christ, if you never said yes and you want to be in his family, you want to, to, to join the fold and be a part of the process, the process that he wants to beautify you and glorify you. It starts with saying yes. You got to yes, commit sir. and say yes to the relationship. Yes. Or you can go through the process to be uh, with him, to be glorified just as he was glorified, to get to a place of greatness and holiness and uh, spiritual spiritual prosperity and faith yeah. in your life. Yeah. So if you want that and you want to be a part of a family where there are so many other benefits and, as well, and we know it's not all about the benefit, it's about just being with him, then say these words. You say, God, I accept yeah. Yeshua as Lord and Savior yes. of my life. I believe he died on the cross for my sins and yeah. my atonement that I can be purified and all my blemishes will be gone. I thank you right now. Holy Spirit, fill me up. Yes. Show me your ways in the name of Yeshua. Yes. If you said those words, then you are. You started the process. You started it. You are in the family. God can begin to love on you, change you, take layers off of you and do what he needs to do with you, do with you, show you your purpose. Hey, it's gonna be beautiful. It may not be easy or seem easy, but it is necessary. It is necessary. So Absolutely. don't stop there. Please uh, find, a, find a Bible, get with Bible knowing people or people that will love to talk about the Bible with you so you can learn it and read it and do what it says and live it out. It's not gonna happen overnight, just like the butterfly does not happen overnight, but mm -hmm. God is with you through that process and he's gonna do great and mighty things in your life, whoever you are. If you are his child, then you are already great. Anyway, anyway, so yes. Um, any other last remarks, my sister? Hey man, um, I'm just, I was, I'm, like I said earlier, I was just honored to be a part of this um, and to share what the Lord had given me. And like I said, guys, trust the process. Lean not on your own understanding and just trust God, believe in him, believe in his word, you know, check yourself, you know, and, 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 you know, and even get an accountability partner if you need to, if you know that that's something that's hard for you to do, but just don't, try to do this alone don't try to do this alone because you it it's impossible to do this alone it takes god so i encourage you guys just trust the process 
And that's all I have. That's it. 